What's good, YouTube? It's your main man, ABD Hero, back again with another video. In this video, we're going to watch a clip from former Chino Hills head coach Steve Bake, uh, national coach of the year, national champion Chino Hills team, coach your boy Lonzo, LaMelo, and LiAngelo Ball. Um, this is a, a it's, it's so many gems in here. And, and the number one takeaway is how not to fumble the bag. Let's go. AB the hero. Back at it, baby. Alright, so first things first, I want to thank each and every one of y'all for hitting the like button. And I want to show y'all this just came in uh, not too long ago. If you ain't hit the like for the video, at least hit the like for that slam cover. Beautiful. They had some limited edition joints. They wanted the bag for it. And uh, your boy AB um, wasn't ready to drop that big bag on that. So we got the regular boy. But that's, that's dope. Let's get straight into this. Alright, so... This clip we're about to watch is uh, from Cannon Sports. There's a full interview with Coach Steve Bake on their channel. Mm, it's so good. So many hidden gems, so many behind the scenes stories, um, a, a different perspective. I, I feel like this was so interesting to me because uh, we've heard, or at least I've heard, so many perspectives, so many um, um, people's opinions on what's happening with the, the Ball family. And for me, I had actually never heard um, from that initial, initial high school coach. <clears throat> I know he left the team after the, that championship season, but I didn't even really know why they talk about all of that in that interview. And uh, we'll, we'll kind of get into some more of that um, after we watch this clip here. But this clip we're about to watch is, like I said, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a blueprint on how not to fumble the bag, right? You see talent, um, <laughs> it makes sense, um, and you do what you got to do, and when you do that, you know what I'm saying? The outcome of it is, is what it is. Um, so let's listen to this. Um, I'm, I'm gonna try not to pause it a ton, right? Um, I'm gonna try not to pause it a ton. However. Because I'm not going to pause it to tell we're going to watch some of it. But go back to the channel here, Cannon Sports. Um, there's a few clips on here from different pieces of that interview. And there's the full one. Make sure y'all go show some love. Um, tell your boy, hey, he said, yo, come check it out. Show some love. Hit that like button. They got 97 likes on this video. And telling you it need 1,000. All right, let's get into it. When did the Ball Brothers, you know? When, when did the Ball Brothers show up? <laughs> my, my very next question. Yeah. So the Ball Brothers, actually, the Ball family, it was really cool. My, it was either my first or second year uh, being an assistant at Chino Hills. I was given the opportunity to run my own basketball camps. And so um, as soon as I put one on, um, I see this family of three boys, you know, in line to uh, sign up for the camp. And I meet LaVar and Tina, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they, they introduced me to the boys. And immediately, you know, the boys obviously were the best players in the camp. They just did these – they were just the best, you know. And um, there was a point in that first day where Lonzo got a rebound, and he was in sixth grade at the time. Uh, Leangelo was fifth, and then LaMelo was in second grade. Um, do y'all remember I, I had the video on the channel, if you haven't seen it, go watch it, where um, th those boys was hooping at such a young age, playing up. Listen to this play that he's about to describe, and tell me if you ain't saw it in that video. And so I see Lonzo get a rebound, and he literally throws a full court pass, one bounce right into the hands of his teammate, Liam. And in that moment, I just thought to myself, okay, LaVar's 6'6", six, six, Tina's 6'1". Six, if this kid ends up being at least 6'6", six, six, which most likely he is going to be, immediately I told myself, this kid's going to be in the NBA. Here's This is the first moment of I'm not going to fumble the bag, right? Um, I saw it. Sixth grader, full court pass, bounce pass, into the hand, easy bucket. I just watched a clip from Magic Johnson a couple days ago, and he's talking about um, the problem with the Knicks. And he said the problem with the Knicks is um, – they can't, they don't have any easy buckets. They can't score easy. Everything is half court. It's a grind offense. And he saw in a sixth grader, damn, that's an easy bucket. If he can get any taller, 
He's going to be an NBA player. I'm not going to fumble the bag. You know, in that moment as a sixth grader. And so, you know, prior to then, I, I never, you know, was involved with, you know, producing, helping, pro, you know, produce an NBA talent. But Some in D1, that moment, but not NBA. Yeah, yeah. In that moment, I was thinking to myself, if, if there's ever going to be an opportunity to coach an NBA kid, I think this is the one. Wow. I mean, so you, you saw, you called Keep it, it going. Uh, age 11. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now they actually, so, so you met them there. It did, yep. Was there like a kind of like a, like, Hey, come to Chino or were they no. already going to Chino? They were already going to Chino. They um, lined up perfectly. You know, they literally live. Mm -hmm. I think this part here is, is so interesting because it, it's two things that I, I see and, and hear when I'm listening to this, this, um, this interview is the foresight, right? So, I just was talking about that bounce. He talked about the bounce pass, and I was talking about how we still see that in Lonzo to, to this day. And so for me, that's something that was instilled in him when he was six years in the sixth grade. So to me, that's saying like that game was was intentionally placed there. Hey, bro, we're gonna do this. My man here, um, uh, I, I saw them coming into Chino and it's coming down the pipeline and then we getting things in, in pre preparation for it. And, uh, and, and so it's just interesting. And LaVar, you know, I, I believed him. I, I knew that the family was different because, you know, back then, especially if you were good, you're gonna either go to Etiwanda or Modern Day. And he said something that was interesting. He said, you know what? You know, all these players go to make a name for themselves by going to modern days and, you know, all these big name schools. He said, we're going to make the school a big name. Mm, that's what I was. I, I lost my point in that last time. This is what I was saying. The intentionality, right? The this is the plan. We're, we're just not going to Chino Hills because it's right down the block. We're going to Chino Hills with the intentions of raising the brand of Chino Hills. So it's so crazy to me when Chino Hills becomes a household name as far as high schools go. And we're looking at um, Lonzo in the sixth grade in LaVar has already had the conversation of here's the plan. We want to turn Chino Hills into a, a household name when it comes to high schools. And you see that years later, that came to fruition. To me, that's, that's, that is worthy of praise. You know, the players should be the ones that make the school a big name. And so when he said that, I didn't think of it as an arrogant thing. I, I just saw the truth to that. You know, players are the ones that are going to make the program successful or, you know, or not. Lesson number two of not fumbling the bag. When the visionary come to you with the vision, don't say, well, you know, you, you already got NBA players. Why are you trying to, why are you trying to do something else? You already going to be a millionaire. It sounds like you trying to be a billionaire. Don't fumble the bag. When the visionary come to you with the bag, oh, it makes sense. You think we could do that? I ain't never seen nobody do it, but let's go. Don't fumble the bag. You know, and so um, when he said that, I knew that they were in it for the long run or the long haul and um, knew that there weren't going to be any, you know, uh, transferring. Or, Trust you know, the process. Like so I just thought that, you know, okay, here's my point guard of the future in uh, two, three years, you know, and so I literally couldn't wait for, for that day. So he steps on campus. Do you mind talking about kind of like the change he brings in? I mean, I know you guys already had a good program going, yeah. but do you mind talking about it? Because obviously he helps take you guys to the next level. Yeah. Uh, here we go. This portion here, this is what the Charlotte Hornets need to listen to. The Greensboro Swarm, this is for y'all. Step number three. And fumble in the bag. Don't fumble the bag. Break it down for us, Steve. I don't know whether it's his energy, his order, or just his playing abilities. Yeah. What changes? It's that's a great question. I mean, I, I think we are gonna do, you know, a documentary movie about this whole, you know, uh, run because there are these like stories within the story that make it so special, right? So in the spring, you know, we're in this uh, local uh, league and some of our best players aren't playing, you know, and we're looking for, this is, 
Lonzo's eighth grade year and um, soon to be a, a freshman, high school freshman. And so in that spring league, we're losing every single game. You know, our best, our point, our starting point guard decides to go play football for the first time oh, wow. in his career. I'm going to stop you right here. Your starting point guard knew what was coming. He said, um, this is a business decision. I don't know him, but I'm telling you. He knew. He heard it in the streets. And he said, you know what? Um, this basketball thing was fun while it lasted. Uh, let me go try something new. And, you know, we have other kids that are injured, you know, wh what have you. And so we're literally losing every single game. And the day of Lonzo's eighth grade graduation, after he graduates, he literally comes to practice the next day, an hour and a half before practice starts. And he's Talk in the gym uh, shooting. That's how you secure the bag. Okay, Lonzo just gave you the breakdown on how to secure the bag. An hour and a half early, I just graduated yesterday, I'm available, I'm playing, I'm shooting. An hour and a half before. And, you know, people are asking me, hey, what are you going to do with this guy? You know, they, there's a lot of hype already. And I'm asking, like, you know. Which is why you're a starter left. People, you know, my college, you know, peers, coaching mentors, what should I do with them? Everybody says, you got to, he's got to earn his minutes. You know, he's got to earn his spot. Mm -hmm. And... Don't it sound like somebody we all know, Mitch Kupchak? <laughs> and um, and so I, you know, I I I said, all right, you know, I, I'll take you know what you say, and and so the but first I'm not gonna game, fumble the, the first summer league game, I have to start him because first off, he's the only one that's been at practice on time or before practice, and he's proved that he's earned it. And the first game he's back, we, we win by twenty. This is how you don't fumble the bag. Everybody, all his coaching buddies, you got to make him earn it. You got to make him earn it. He got to work for it. He got to put the time in. He got to spend time on the bench. You got to see it. He got to hit shots in the clutch moments. My man said, well, uh, the first game, I had to start him. I had to, you know, we had injuries. We had all of these things going on. I had to start him. No, what he's telling you is I'm not going to fumble the bag. I saw it. He was working. He was at practice going hard. He was there before practice. The traditional sense of, you know, you got to earn your minutes on the court and play good. I already didn't need to go down that route because I had already seen it. He had the intentionality to secure the bag and I had the intentionality and the thoughts and the perspective not to fumble it. Shemaine Man, ABD Hero, we getting up out of here. Peace. No, not peace. Plus one, triple B's, we out.